is Reedsville Chamber of Commerce News and Views, a business resource show with a focus on enhancing the business environment through advocacy, mentoring, and education in an effort to promote economic growth. The Reedsville Chamber of Commerce is a membership organization in North Carolina, working on behalf of its members for the betterment of the community. With Chamber of Commerce News and Views, you can use. Here's Chamber President Diane Sawyer. Hi, welcome to the Reedsville Chamber News and View Show. We have several guests with us today, and we're excited to have them from Cone Health and from the Reedsville Economic Development Department. We're going to be discussing some very exciting news. So welcome to the show, everybody. I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. We'll start with you, Terry. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm Terry Aiken, uh, Chief Executive Officer for Cone Health. Hey, and I'm uh, Cindy Farron. I'm the president of Annie Penn Hospital. Uh, Jeff Garska, Economic Development Director for the City of Reedsville, and always glad to be on the News and Views. Thanks. I'm so happy to have you guys. So we have a big, um, big, exciting announcement recently from Cone Health, and um, I want you guys to discuss it, but um, there was a press release about the intent to merge with Centera, um healthcare system. So tell us about that. What does that mean and what does that look like? And Terry, I'll let you kind of introduce it. Sure. You know, it's a really exciting time for Cone Health. Um, and um, basically what we've done is we have signed a letter of intent with the intent to merge with Centera Healthcare, which is a health system based out of Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, they're very similar to us in terms of their values, in terms of uh, the things that they care a lot about, and uh, we really became convinced that we can do much more for our communities together than either of us could do separately. So um, uh, there will be a process uh, between now and presumably when we get to the actual merger, uh, should probably another nine to 12 months, um, uh, but uh, we're, we're very excited about the, uh, the future of healthcare in our region that is going to be made possible by virtue of this merger. Well, I know that um, we wanted you to come on today as the CEO, and also um, for us in Reedsville, um, we want to know how it's going to affect Annie Penn, so we asked Cindy to, to come along and um, help us with that. So, um, Cindy, what are your thoughts about it and how it's going to affect um, Annie Penn here in Reedsville directly? Well, I think it would certainly be a, a very positive impact. You know, Reedsville is the hub for healthcare in Rockingham County and beyond, you know, with Caswell County and patients that come to us uh, to Reesville and Annie Penn from Virginia, Southern Virginia. So we do extend um, across our county lines. And the merger with Centera is going to really allow us the opportunity to continue to provide the exceptional care that we ha um, are accustomed to here and expand. You know, there are certain areas within our county that are underserved, and Centera has definitely a shared commitment, just like Cone Health and Annie Penn Hospital, for really serving the underserved. And being able to expand, whether it's the traditional models of care with um, offices and buildings across our county, or um, virtually through telemedicine. And I think the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has given us a lot of experience um, about and using uh, telehealth and telemedicine and, you know, virtual meetings just like this where we're all in our offices um, can take place as well with patients. So we really um, share that commitment with Centera. And, and I do want to share just some personal and professional experience with Centera. Um, my hometown is Norfolk, Virginia. Um, all of my family is there. And I also worked in that market um, prior to coming to Cone Health. And I was an executive vice president for a health system. And I don't want to call Centera necessarily a competitor in that market with me at the time, because they were really more like a collaborator. They're very committed to community outreach and, um, you know, reaching out into the community and serving that way just, and, and we were too. And um, I don't see where that has changed with Centera. 
So there will be a positive impact in allowing us to expand our exceptional services. Uh, physician recruitment will be able to partner with them to really enhance physician recruitment. And Centera has experience in rural health. And as you know, Cone Health has a commitment to rural health care uh, through Annie Penn Hospital. And Centera has a, a few rural health facilities as well, which will be great to partner with them and, and learn how to better serve our communities, um, especially when we talk about health equity in rural communities, that is, is truly an opportunity for improvement. Well, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of great opportunities. And Cindy, thank you for um, addressing the issue of care, because I feel like that's obviously a really high concern for um, not only the community at large, but um, our employers. I know that we do a lot um, with our employee wellness um, and our industries knowing you guys have done a phenomenal job um, partner with Jeff, partner with the Industrial Alliance um, and the Chamber to let people know that you're also there for our businesses and our industries. And um, one of the reasons we brought Jeff along today, um, you know, one of the things when you hear merger, um, people tend to get a little bit nervous. Um, a lot of times that means that people may lose jobs or when things are um, combined. Um, and I don't know that that's the case uh, with this merger. And I'd love for, um, you know, you to talk about how that's going to impact. What does merger look like as far as jobs are concerned? Uh, go ahead, Terry. Sure. Um, well, you know, Annie Penn is not going anywhere. Cone Health is not going anywhere. We're going to get better and stronger. Um, this gives us, gives us, as Cindy mentioned, access to more resources faster um, so that we can provide more care to more people in more places, frankly, and, and closer to home. Um, access is so key uh, given our value-based commitment. You know, we're an organization that's had a long-standing commitment to really transforming healthcare so that we don't just wait for you to get sick or injured to treat you, but we actually partner with you to help you stay well and healthy and out of the hospital. Um, it's the right thing to do and it's far and away the most cost effective thing to do. So we're convinced that this relationship with Centera is going to, uh, going to further enable that and allow us to do more faster than we'd be able to do on our own. Um, you know, we're, we're going to, um, we're always going to need uh, Annie Penn Hospital and its associated programs. So the jobs for people associated with Annie Penn aren't going anywhere. Um, at the corporate level, as we look to find potentially efficiencies and those kinds of things, uh, one of the things that both organizations have said is that we're not going to have any layoffs. If we do have um, some consolidation or job reductions, we'll deal with those through reassignment or re retirement or attrition those kinds of things. But uh, keep in mind that as we expand our points of access and um, whether those are actual physical, like Cindy said, or virtual, um, that's going to be, that's going to require people. That's going to, that's gonna, those are going to be jobs. We also, as part of this merger, will have uh, a, a much larger combined uh, insurance plan with options that we can provide to people. So affordability and choice is, is a big part of this. And uh, as we have, um, uh, uh, as we bring a, 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 um, a hub for the health insurance program down here, corporate hub, that will bring jobs. So uh, for this entire region, we think this is going to be uh, really expansive with a lot of uh, exciting future uh, career opportunities for people who have been working with Cone Health. Thank yeah. you. For, oh, go ahead, Cindy. Well, I was just going to elaborate on the um, you know, the opportunities for growth, you know, Cone Health has provided wonderful opportunities for career advancement within our existing network. And partnering with uh, Centera through this merger will really enhance those opportunities and increase those opportunities. And as Terry mentioned, um, Centera has a commercial health product that they started back in uh, 1984. And that was back when a lot of health systems were really trying to get into the insurance business, and many of them failed miserably. But Centera stuck with it. They had the right expertise, and they've created a product that will come to our market as an additional choice for our community um, for, for insurance coverage. And that, like Terry mentioned, in and of itself um, will require uh, people to facilitate that in our market. So more jobs, not fewer jobs. And I, and I think it's also just important for me to reiterate, um, Cindy, I think we're, 
we're in the uh, 90th anniversary year of Annie Penn, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, you know, Annie Penn has been an award-winning institution, and we consider them a real jewel in our overall health healthcare system. So again, they're not going anywhere. If anything, we're going to look to support them even more and make them even stronger for the communities that we serve. Yeah. So Jeff, from your perspective, how are you going to be able to use this, um, this merger and this information about um, bring in even more highly trained professionals and um, even more top-notch care to rural areas and all the things that they've been discussing. How does that look from an economic development perspective and what's that, what is that going to be able to do for you and what you need to do? I'll be honest with you. It's a little, it's a little overwhelming and, and I'll tell you why. I mean, you, you mentioned, you know, the Reedsville Industrial Alliance, for instance. Um, we've always had strong uh, Annie Penn representation and, and really Cone, um, representation in the in the programs where they can go in, into industries and have on-site nursing even if two or three industries come together and share uh, a nurse um, to do vaccines to do on-site um, you know, sort of triage care those types of things you don't have to leave the workplace to go um, you know get get checked out for a cold those kind of things and we actually hosted a Reedsville Industrial Alliance meeting at Annie Penn's conference room they talked a lot about that program um, so that was, you know, we consider them an industry just like we would any of our large manufacturing industries. Typically in any community, you know, your, your local healthcare uh, uh, institution is one of your largest employers, you know, school systems, um, you know, local government are always very big, but your healthcare institutions are always one of your largest. So we treat them just like we would any major, major employer in the, in the community from an economic development standpoint. And so, um, you know, how we continue that relationship and support the growth from a number of standpoints, workforce development. Um, you know, I teach a class through the community college to help uh, unemployed individuals find work with specific industries. And we did one with Annie Penn. Um, and they were, you know, looking to hire people beyond um, healthcare related tracks. They were looking for people in you know, the kitchen, sanitation, and these other um, all across the board, and I believe, I think, and you hired a few people, or at least had made some good connections. Um, so again, it's it's you know it, it's it's going to be overwhelming for for my team to try to keep up with their growth, hopefully, and um, you know the continue of <laughs> extremely positive relationship. But um, it's exciting for us. I mean, we're just you know uh, we appreciate the commitment to um, to the hospital here. Um, you know, as Cindy mentioned. We've had, you know, retail data uh, proven that our, our, our draw for you know, retail and commercial activity in Reedsville comes from um, a, a very large area well into Guilford County, the northern, you know, Summerfield, Oak Ridge, um, southern Virginia, Caswell, other parts of Rockingham County. You know, 10 mile radius around Reedsville is 125,000 population. Um, Typically, when you talk about your that's so that's our market, you know, it's larger than the city of Reedsville. So that's, you know, when you <clears throat> when you track retail data, healthcare typically follows those same patterns. So, you know, this hospital, this rural hospital has a huge market share. And we talk about the, the capacity and the capabilities that this hospital has, which is world class in a lot of cases with stroke care and, and so many other things. And you know, my wife's a, a, a cardiac ICU nurse and on two heart, carry and she gets so many Rockingham County patients um, because you can triage here and get people to, to Moses Cone in those, in those highly critical units within 15, 20 minutes in an ambulance. Yep. Once US 29 becomes a Blue Shield interstate, that connectivity, and, and we sell that here. That's not a, that's not a threat. I mean, that's, a, that's an incredible connectivity. Um, and now she's working at Green Valley a lot. So, again, you know, you can get tested here and, boom, you're at your – your local coronavirus hospital in, in a matter of minutes. So, um, you know, just, it, but as the, as the capabilities through this merger and the technology that, you know, this, um, this new organization is going to invest in this hospital, you know, you're able to do things here that um, it's not just a shuttle, it's becoming more of an independent institution. So, you know, we see, and, and you know, and again with, um, we have such a huge push on, our residential recruitment campaign and you know with downtown residential properties coming online and a huge housing boom here you know we would see folks as your insurance division grows you know we would love to attract some of those high-paying jobs to live in Reedsville and and work from home or work at the office and 
So we see that as an opportunity to, you know, to work with you all to not just recruit physicians, but, you know, we would hope some of that spill over people want to live in a small town and, and work in Greensboro or whatever. So, you know, we're just, again, we're, we, we couldn't be more excited about, about the opportunity. So. Well, Jeff, let me just take this opportunity to say thanks to your wife. Um, she, uh, she works in one of the, the top, uh, the top heart programs in the nation. And we're so grateful to her for, um, for stepping in, stepping in and helping to care for our COVID patients. That's a very, very big and important, important role. So please share our gratitude with her when you, when you, uh, when you see her this evening or whenever. I will. Thank you for that. I'll make her watch the show eventually. And, there you go. <laughs> she, yeah, but uh, no, I appreciate that. And I mentioned it for two reasons. One, I'm proud of her. I never miss a chance to mention her. But two, I, you know, Cone is huge on, on uh, employee satisfaction and award, awards for employee, uh, you know, taking care of employees. And, and Absolutely. Uh, she recognizes that. So I, I always mention that. So thank you for that. So. The, the other thing I might add um, is, you know, really across all our communities, including Reedsville and Rockingham County, um, both Centera and uh, Cone Health view healthcare as local and regional. And so, you know, we think it is so important not to, just to be in our communities, but to be of our communities. So the, um, the support we provide in the business community, the support we provide uh, in the not-for-profit community, the leadership we provide in, the, in, in across the community, um, that's not going anywhere. And in fact, we, again, we would be looking to, uh, to strengthen that, if anything. Well, I just want to say, um, you guys have talked about several things that kind of segues into a couple things that I want to talk about. Um, so we talked about, um, we've mentioned coronavirus. So we're talking about the pandemic and um, what a time to announce um, a merger. Um, and so I think, and, and then Cindy, you brought in um, the personal aspect and Jeff, you did too. So, and I'm, I'm also um, proud of a Cone employee. My mother is the AC uh, weeknights at Annie Penn Hospital and been there for almost 30 years. And um, I was a, uh, a junior volunteer when I was a teenager. Um, and so I have a long history dating back to Angie Staub and um, you know, and then got to work with Mickey at the chamber and then was so excited to have Cindy um, when she came because I was so um, just just so proud of where Annie Penn had come. Um, and Cindy has just picked up and just taken it even further um, and to, to have, um, Annie Penn has a really long history in our community, as you mentioned, 90 years. And so we've been through one merger, um, you know, and a lot of things um, were changed um, for the better. Um, with that merger, but I also would be curious what your perspective was on the first go round kind of versus how this looks and, and why announce it at this time, like what's going on and how that, you know, because people, I think that's the big thing is like the unknown. So the more that we can tell people and explain to people the why, I think they will um, understand and you've given us so many great reasons, but I'd love to know a little more about that. Yeah, great, great questions. Um, well, you know, first of all, with respect to the Annie Penn um, merger and, and actually Cindy's been part of Cone Health longer than I have so she may have some perspective as well but I think um, people who've been around since the merger would say that it's been a, a big positive for the Annie Penn Hospital, the programs, the services. Um, it's added resources to the equation, it's added talent to the equation and I think that what we're able to do for the citizens of that community um, has, has only been enhanced and sustained and preserved. And I think um, in the same way, uh, I think that this merger is going to do the same thing for Cone Health at large, including Annie Penn and our other facilities and, uh, and other parts of our organization. Um, you know, the, the question on um, why now, um, you know, we, we really, this is not a situation where Cone Health has to merge. We're a strong organization. We're among the top performing organizations in the country on several metrics, including quality. Uh, we're strong financially. Um, we have been, I would say, for the better part of two years, just kind of open-mindedly exploring uh, options for partnerships, even before that, frankly, but certainly the last two years fairly intensively and wanted to try and find the right partner, uh, the, the right organization that would be a match for us from, uh, from a cultural standpoint, a strategic standpoint, uh, a value standpoint, and uh, we're convinced that we found that in Sentara, and I think both Cone and Sentara really have had a strong desire to move into a relationship 
while we could do it while, uh, from a position of strength and, and while we can be proactive, right? So that the future's coming, uh, we can either shape it or we can react to it. And, and I think together we really see huge opportunity to shape it. Um, and I think the other thing I would point out is, is that, um, you know, our board had made a decision to move into this letter of intent uh, right before really the pandemic hit full force. And so uh, if anything, the, the pandemic sort of slowed us down. I think everybody sort of hit the pause button, if you will, so that we could, um, we could stabilize ourselves somewhat. We're still obviously in the pandemic that we need to take very seriously. But as you all well recall, the first uh, you know, two, three months were, were fairly intense and, and we didn't see fit to move forward at that point. But I think now that we've learned to, to better adapt to and live in a COVID world where we treat COVID patients and we're treating most of uh, what had historically been our, our, our other patients, our regular patients, um, we're in a much better position. And so both organizations decided that now would be a good time to move forward. And if I could also comment that um, as far as the the first merger, um, you know, certainly I applaud Susan Fitzgibbon, now last name is Shoemaker, back then. I wasn't with Cone Health at the time, but it was um, a really great decision to uh, merge with Cone Health. It has served us well. I have been at Annie Penn for just over three years, but I've lived in Reedsville much longer. So Reedsville is my home and Annie Penn is my hospital. So I have a personal and professional investment in Annie Penn and Cone Health. In fact, I've, I've received lots of care recently um, here at Annie Penn. Um, so I can attest to the high quality that is offered and um, it, we will continue to do that. Well, that is fabulous to hear. And we've talked a lot about merger and business and jobs and care. Um, one of the last points that I want to hit, because believe it or not, we're running out of time. Um, but I want to talk about any pen has always been um, a major um, player in the community, an important role as a community leader, um, very involved in community organizations, um, leadership financially. Will that change or is that something that's going to maybe stay the same and even be stronger or how, how does that look? Well, it will definitely stay the same and we always look to become stronger. Um, I am very committed to being in the community and, and um, our staff and physicians and sharing our expertise through community outreach, through sponsorships, um, supporting our clinics. Uh, and, you know, being very much involved in the community, I plan to continue on the Reedsville Downtown Corporation, as well as the Citizens for Economic Development here in the county. And, uh, you know, we have a commitment to nurture the legacy of Annie Spencer Penn. And we are going to continue to do that throughout this merger and be able to enhance what she really started. Um, a very, very long time ago. And we take that legacy very seriously. And I know you do. So we really appreciate you. And I wanted to be sure that we were maybe hitting all things that mm -hmm. both the business community and the community at large would ask. Um, but we are starting to run out of time. So I kind of want to round robin and wrap it up. If there are additional thoughts or things that you want to be sure we cover, Terry, I'll start with you. You know, just to emphasize again, first of all, hello and thanks to your mom. Appreciate her service and all her years of service. We couldn't have, we wouldn't be who we are without her. Um, and then um, I just want to emphasize again, this is exciting. It's about more care for more people in more places. It's about better affordability and more choices. And uh, it's an exciting time for Cone Health and, and uh, all the communities we serve, including Reedsville, Rockingham County, and uh, the, the gem of an organization that is, that is Annie Penn. Cindy, anything you'd like to add? I certainly totally uh, agree with all of that and the Annie Penn Hospital is here to stay and I'm just thrilled that we have found a partner that is very much like us. Uh, Sentara provides exceptional care and has um, national accolades just like we do and I think it's going to be a wonderful partnership and great things are to come for Rockingham County. Jeff, I'd love to hear any additional thoughts that you may have. Well, again, I mean, we we just anticipate the city's relationship getting uh, stronger, and um, 
look forward to growing with you in a, in a number of ways. And I know we've talked about so many other future initiatives that, you know, we can work together with and, um, you know, medical districts and just so many exciting things we can do. And as, as you grow, we will as well. And, um, you know, appreciate the commitment that Cone as a whole has uh, with the city. And um, we trust your judgment on the merger and, um, you know, certainly wish it well and, and, you know, anticipate that everything will be better than, better than it is today. Yes. And I appreciate being on the show. Well, I appreciate, oh, go ahead, Terry. I would just echo, thanks so much for having us today. I've enjoyed being with you and hope it was helpful. Well, it was super helpful. Cindy? Yep, I just want to assure our community that we are right here with you. So if you need us, please don't hesitate to come and see us. And the last thing I think, too, we didn't discuss, but I think there's going to be a little length of time as things move forward. I don't think it's tomorrow, right? So, um Yes, things, things stay the same for now. Um, we would expect that um, our due diligence process and, and the regulatory approval process is going to take a number of months. And um, uh, we expect probably, uh, if all goes as expected, to be in a position to finalize the merger by, um, by early to mid calendar year 2021. So we've got some time ahead of us. Well, I would just like to say um, from the chamber perspective and the chamber board of directors, um, we are just very, very thankful um, for the leadership at Cone Health and at Andy Penn Hospital. Um, and as Jeff, you know, to echo what Jeff said, we trust your judgment. Uh, certainly, um, it shows your leadership. Um, as you said, Terry, you know, that this was about growing and um, being stronger partners rather than reacting to the future. And um, we're just so thankful to have such a great um, healthcare system and to have a wonderful award-winning hospital. Um, I know Jeff and I both discuss it quite a bit with people. It's one of the, the best things that we have to offer. Um, so we're thankful for your support, your partnership, um, and just everything that you guys do. So thank you so much for being here to talk about it. And um, we look forward to hearing more about it. Maybe when things move along further down the timeline, we can regroup and discuss a little more. No, Cindy and I would love to visit with you again anytime. Thank Fabulous. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being on the show. We appreciate it so much. And that is it for today's News and Views show. Please make sure that you check us out on Facebook and on Roku and um, YouTube. So we have lots of um, different outlets for you to watch our shows and stay connected. And we are located at 140 South Scale Street in downtown Reedsville. And that's it for today. Thank you. I'm Diane Sawyer with the Reedsville Chamber, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>